Mount San Jacinto College, and the title of my paper is Implications of Robotic Capitalism on Global Laundry. Today we're going to be talking about the modern Luddite fallacy, specifically the idea that automation will lead to the destruction of the global economy and human society when the last job is automated. Now, what I intend to prove is that if there are no, if no one has a job, then there are no human inputs in the products being produced, and therefore the cost of the products would be zero. Therefore, if you have no money, you can still afford free. In addition, we're going to discuss, construct a general principle for understanding the effect of robotics on nations based on their demographics. So, let's get started. Next slide. The history of the Luddites begins in 1790 with the start of the Industrial Revolution in England in the textile industry. 31 years later, we see the rise of the Luddites. Now, the Luddites were leg stocking makers who were being put out of work by the newer, faster weaving machines. They had a simple solution for this, destroy the machines. Between 1811 and 1817, they destroyed over 100,000 pounds sterling worth of industrial machines before being put down by the British military. The Luddites failed, but they've been with us ever since. With each new wave of uh, automation, we see a new wave of uh, Luddite thinking that basically says, yeah, they were wrong, but now it's different. Now, this culminates in what I would call the modern Luddite. And the lot of modern Luddite, uh, next slide, is different from the past Luddites in that they accept the macroeconomic principle that disproves the old Luddite. Now, I won't go into all of this, but this is the, this is the flow chart that il illustrates the principle. And the first arrow says technology goes up. The last arrow says jobs go up. Now, the thing to remember is this is a macroeconomic principle that states at the micro level you can still lose your job, but at the macro level, economy-wide, your job and more are created by the increase of technology. So, modern lives are different in that they agree that this is true, has been proved true for over 200 years, and this is the traditional uh, economic rebuttal to the old Luddites. However, the, Mac, the modern Luddites, like uh, Martin Ford, he wrote the book you see up there, Lights in the Tunnel. They believe, and I'll, I'll quote uh, Martin Ford in his book here, uh, says that every consumer or light in our tunnel derives income from a job. If the bulk of those jobs are automated away, Demand must fade. Now, what he's trying to say, and I'll paraphrase and take it to its logical conclusion, and say, what happens when the last job is automated? No one will have any money to buy the goods being produced, and so they, the demand will fade, and it will lead to the destruction and collapse of the economy and society, etc. To answer this objection to automation, I would like to uh, look at a corollary uh, to that question, that is, what is the cost of a zero human product? The cost, uh, and by zero human I mean a product that has no human labor, no human uh, ownership, management, or entrepreneurship. Zero human inputs. In terms of robotics, what would a robot that could produce such uh, a product look like? Uh, next slide. So, for purposes of this discussion, I'd like to introduce the concept of an ideal robot. Now, an ideal robot would have no owner. It would have an infinite power supply, it would be able to self-maintain, uh, know how to make whatever you wanted, and it would produce its own raw materials. This robot really could not exist, but if something like it uh, did, and it put everyone out of work, the question would be then, what would the cost of a chair produced by such a robot be? To answer that question, next slide, we need to look at a quote from Adam Smith, who said that labor, therefore, 
is the true measure of the exchangeable value of all commodities. Now, this is a corollary to his famous uh, quote that uh, the wealth of a nation is the labor of its people. This is saying the same thing, just a little different. But what it says about our chair is that if there are no human inputs in the chair, then the cost of the chair is zero. So if you take that, and, and by the way, this is because it's outside or exogenous to the economy, just like sunlight is outside of the economy. It's not that we don't derive benefit from it, it's just not an economically definable benefit. So what this has is, when we take this full circle back to our original modern Luddite uh, uh, objection to automation, we find that if everyone's been put out of work, then there are no human inputs in the products being produced, and therefore the cost of those products is zero. If you are out of work and have no money, you can still afford free. That's, that's the rebuttal to the, the modern Luddite fallacy. And uh, quite frankly, if it were possible, it's not such a bad world to live in. Everything's free. So, but it's founded on the idea that uh, economic value is derived only from human labor. That's the Adam Smith 101 takeaway that we're going to need later on. So, next slide. Next, we're going to look at the effect of robotics on uh, outsourcing. Now, outsourcing is basically where you have low-skilled jobs being out exported from a domestic market to a foreign market where labor costs are cheaper, usually due to lower skill level or education level of the labor force. The thing to remember is there's an, a lot of additional costs that have to be overcome by that low-cost labor in order to make that a viable alternative for business. And the characteristic of robotics that apply, applies to this situation is that the easiest job to automate is the lowest skilled one. Now the implication, therefore, is that the nations that will be most negatively affected by robotic technology will be the lowest skilled lowest education level workforces. So, next slide. We're now ready to construct our general uh, understanding of the effect of robotic technology on uh, nations based on their demographics. The two metrics that we want to look at are literacy rate and population. Literacy rate, this is Japan, literacy has a 99% literacy rate. Now, the reason why that's important is because literacy roughly correlates to education level. And if you want to have a prosperous nation in a robotic economy, and by the way, Japan is the world leader with more industrial robotics <coughs> than any nation, they also have a low uh, unemployment rate. It's been 2.5% since 19, uh, average since 1950. So that's proof that. Uh, they, their workforce has not been heavily impacted by robotics, and it's because of the principle that uh, easiest job to automate is the lowest skilled one. So the other factor, though, you want to look at is the population, because Adam Smith 101 still applies. The wealth of a nation is the labor of its people, and so you want to have a lot of people laboring to generate a lot of economic value. So, next slide. What we have learned. We learned, number one, that the Luddites were wrong. The modern Luddites are still wrong. The, that if there are no human inputs in the products being produced, if that were possible, then the cost of the products would be zero, and if you have no money, you can still afford free. Secondly, we learned that, uh, we learned that to be success, for a nation to be successful in a modern robotic economy, you need a large, well-educated population. Pretty simple standard fare, but it, we've proved that it does not change just because we introduce robotics into the equation. So, based on over 200 years of sound economic theory and observation, we can say that automation can continue to provide an ever-increasing pop global population with an ever-increasing standard of living, for as long as humanity chooses to do so. But therein lies the catch, humanity must choose to do it. As we saw with the, the Luddites, Humani uh, fear is man's greatest limiting factor, and 
Sir Francis Bacon said it best. Nothing is to be feared but fear itself. Nothing grievous but to yield to grief. Humanity's future, very much so, was, is, and will be a matter of choice, human choice. Thank you. Do you have any questions? How did you pick this topic? I'm curious how this came about. I've never heard of uh, robotic, robotic space economies. Well, I, I suppose it has to do with my mental culture uh, because I was in, uh, I wrote this for an English class. English 103, uh, <laughs> my professor, Kathy Grosstrand over there. Uh, I was taking uh, economics class at the time, but that class didn't require a research paper, so I wrote it for this one instead. I suppose if I had to think, say credit anything, it's it was the economics class and just my general propensity. So, anybody else? It, it just seems like the unions have also created that. You know, they've always tried to hold down the robots, not trying to eliminate mm -hmm. jobs. And, and, it's know. it's very difficult to convince someone who just lost their job at the micro level that their job and more are will magically appear somewhere else in the economy. But the interesting thing is the modern Luddite, the thoughtful ones, actually take the next step and say, okay, yeah, we prove you, that's held true for over 200 years, but now there's a tipping point. What happens when everyone's out of work? Anyone else? Well, it, it seems that <clears throat> your theory that if, if everything was, you could still afford free, mm -hmm. you would still have a societal breakdown because you're still going to have have and have nots. Because if everything is free, that doesn't mean everybody has one. And, you know, uh, actually, it would mean that everyone has. Uh, well, are you sure? Uh, sunlight. Sunlight's a perfect example. True. That, uh, that's true, but that's, that's, not, what a, that's not a physical product. Uh, but that's, uh, that is what being uh, outside or exogenous or free means. It means that there is no limit to demand. The demand, all the demand that is re has, is requested is supplied. I, I'm not saying it's possible. I agree with you. I don't think the ideal robot could ever exist. But right. I mean, if it could, and you could just somehow have no one own it, <laughs> imagine that. But if you could, uh, then yeah. Right, because you know, it, be your, your father is well, sitting there from an iPad. I don't have a high iPad. I'm taking his. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> well, there it's free, be a, but there uh, would be I, another he's got one I don't. It, it's I don't free. I'll give it in this room. I'm <laughs> taking it. It's mine now. You know, I mean. He's going to my dad off. I'm not talking about touch his yes. iPad, but you know what I mean? Well, um, let, let's say that the, the, the cultures that do embrace robotics the way that you would you say Japan does. Mm -hmm. But even, even if we say robotics are a good thing, and I think in most circumstances I would agree with that, in Japan it hasn't worked out as great as you say it has. Japan's economy is actually in, on the decline because they're they're so highly um, um, that they're the they used to be the second largest economy. Uh, they're now the third largest economy because a lot of the manufacturing that doesn't require robotics is moving elsewhere. Mm -hmm. So the jobs don't necessarily stay in one place; they go somewhere else. Germany, for example, is increasing their production without using robotics, and their economies are working a lot a lot better. Uh, Number one, the Germans uh, are one of the world leaders in robotic technology. But they, they do it in conjunction with per, uh, manual production well. well. Uh, let me say one other thing about the, the Japanese. The reason their economy is in decline is because of the second metric that I mentioned. Uh, it takes a large population. Japan's population has been decreasing. They have a negative 0 0.091 uh, population uh, growth rate, and their they're using robotics to try to turn that around and stay competitive, but that's only going to give them a first mover advantage, a first monopoly, for a certain amount of time. When other nations, like the United States, were second in, ro in robotics, industrial robots, uh, when we get the same technology, uh, they will be left with only the economic value created by the labor of their people. That's the fundamental. Technology can, multi is, can be a multiplier effect, but your fundamental metric of what generates economic value is always and always will be human labor. Right, so the much of robotics alone can't create a good economy then. Uh, right. 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 Uh, in, so, in fact, yes. 